And like you were mentioning, people uh, putting out trends for us to follow based off of the music. Do you think they do that with other music as well? I mean, it's hard to tell, man. I, I think that people who listen to country music actually have their music. You know, there's some washed down garbage in that too, but for the most part, I think that the country music that's played on the radio and the country music that they play in their house is, is almost exactly the same. Um, rock music, I think, has watered down from 15 or so years ago when I used to listen to rock because it had a lot more talent, it seemed, than the, than the rock that comes out now, and they kind of have underground rock now, too, so I think rock and hip-hop were both the only music they really saw as a threat. Um, so I think that they get shitted on in the same way. Um, but like yeah. what you're saying about the hip-hop concerts and shit being like so diverse, man, it's like when you go to a hip-hop concert that's true underground hip-hop, it's it's diverse, and everybody leaves their fucking ego at the door. Nobody's in there trying to, like, be for nothing. It's all for the love. You got people hopping around and making little cyphers and shit and whatever. But you go to a rap concert, man, you, you're just sitting back waiting until somebody picks a fight or whatever. People go to rap concerts deep as shit because they figure before they even go they know they're going to get in a fight. Uh, yeah. I had a question Zip. for you. Um, in Zip. past episodes, uh, Paranoid has brought up the fact that a lot of these uh, uh, hip-hop artists and rap artists are starting to use a lot of symbol, uh, Illuminati symbolism uh, on their album covers and uh, Jay Z throwing up the the pyramid thing and and uh, so um, what do you think about that? I think symbolism is a lot deeper than than the average person thinks. I uh, watched a special on it from uh, Michael Tessarian, uh, Origins and the Oracles, and I think uh -huh. that um, a lot of the stuff, you know, it's it, it's funny that it pours over into hip hop, but what even when we sit here, you know, we we use that word so loosely. We say it pours over into hip hop, or we see hip hop artists throwing this up, or whatever. But in reality, they're not hip hop artists; they're pop artists. So, you know, right. we we have to be more careful about how we title those guys. Because uh, the thing I was going to say also is that, like, I could sit down and show my my music to somebody that's twice my age, and say Illuminati, for example. I sit down there and show them that. They fuck with that track hard as shit. And the first thing they're going to say is, I don't usually fuck with hip-hop, but I like that. But the reason is because what they think hip-hop is, is the garbage that's on the TV, the garbage that these middle school kids are bumping, and the garbage that's on the ringtones and all that. So they already have a stereotype in their mind about hip-hop. And that's exactly what they were trying to do when they destroyed hip-hop in the first place. They were trying to give people a bad impression of it as soon as they heard it, so they never searched for somebody who was underground. In a lot of people's opinion, an underground artist is a washed down pop artist that never made it. But that's not what it is at all, man. 99.9% uh, .9 of us are happy right where we're at. We love our fan base. We do it for the love. I mean, we're content with what we're doing. Of course, we want a bigger fan base. It's just more people for us to spread our message to. But we're not, like, sitting here saying, well, damn, if I'm not on in six months, then I need to try to find something else to do. Because it's not an occupation, man. It's more like a... It's more like a destiny. It's more like this is what we were put here to do. We don't know why, but we know what we want to do while we're doing it. You know what I'm saying? And I got to say, I got to say that anybody that actually listens to any kind of underground hip-hop music, um, they got to know that uh, <laughs> the, the people that are presented for us in the mainstream, whatever, you know, the people that are underground, it's, they're not underground because they're not good enough to make it in the mainstream because artists like yourself prove that 90% of the people in the mainstream can't even hold a candle, can't even hold a flame to... 10% of the people in the underground. I mean, the underground is just saturated with people with so much talent. But the thing is, there, with that much talent, usually comes um, uh, a sense of uncompromising with your music, and that's 
that's what stops us from basically breaking through to the mainstream. It has nothing to do with talent. It has nothing to do with drive. It has to do with the fact that there's a glass ceiling for anybody who is not going to allow themselves to be sold out. Yeah, exactly. I agree, because it seems like music is just uh, made more to sell uh, jeans or, you know, product, pretty much. And uh, I don't see uh, the lure of, I mean, people... You know, people listen to this music and then talk about, you know, Bentleys and mansions and chains and all the money they make. And, you know, most of us people don't make a lot of money. So, I mean, I don't see how why people relate to that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it doesn't, uh, I mean, yeah, there's some songs I like, but um, in the past or whatever and, and still do on the radio. But, um, you know, a beat I might like or something, but uh, I pretty much can't stand it now, so. Yeah, man, I, I've always said the same shit, man. You know, and it's that's why people say you sold out. Now, if you if you come from the bottom and you make it to the top, you can mention some things like that, man. You know, if you want to make one song that that really outlines how you came from the struggle and what it feels like to come from that and sit in a Bentley and and you know ride through Miami or something, just living a life that you never thought you'd have. That's fine, but making an entire album or a career based on the same recycled fucking garbage that the last person did, I mean, in my opinion, it's just, it's just a waste, man, and you got every kid in middle school and high school, and most of them in, in elementary that are already paying attention to that same garbage, and this is what they base their life on, this is the morals and the, and the goals and shit they set for themselves. So, you know, it's just separating our country into two classes. There is no middle class anymore. Uh, the middle class has been gone for 10 years. You're either lower class or you're upper class. And just because somebody told you, hey, you know, we, we think that you can sell because of your appearance, you'll appeal to middle school kids. So say this in your record. Um... Every time you say Cristal, uh, the company will pay you. Every time you talk about Nikes, Nike will pay you. Uh, you know, just advertise as much as you can. Paul Wall, you know, talking about the gold teeth for every album he put out, or the, the diamond teeth or whatever. It's just, you know, it's just, it's just retarded. So do you think that artists uh, with talent have a responsibility to, to um, I guess, do something that has some worth to it? <laughs> well, I hear a lot of people, man, that even try to convince me. that I'll show them some shit, and they'll say, well, look, man, you got to do a lot of stuff for the girls, and you got to do some club music and shit to get on, and then once you're done with that contract, you can go ahead and do what you, you, know, what you were trying to do. But they don't understand if... If I come in here tonight and I show you what I have the potential to do on tracks like Epidemic and Illuminati right. and any other track I can pick off of any of my tapes from this whole past year or before, and I go and sell out for an album or a three-album contract, I can't come back to this same fan base because I'm a piece of, you know, I'm a piece of shit forever trying to flood the youth and the next generation with that garbage I've already tainted my shit. You can't come back out and be where you were and say, well, hey, look, you know, I just did it for this and that because you're a fake dude for spreading messages that you don't believe in. Right, create so the false sense of reality. Sell out, you sold out. Yep, it creates a false sense of reality there, and, and, uh, and, and basically you're all about reality. So that would uh, totally be against what, you know, what you're all about, it seems like, so... Um, well, hey, we got about eight minutes left. Uh, I was wanting to know if Paranoid had any more questions. Um, yeah, well, real quick, you want to go ahead and shout out your MySpace one more time? Yeah, man. Um, that knowledge is hip-hop shit, man. It's, it's, it's not just a slogan or a motto. It's a movement. I'm saying, man, knowledge is hip-hop. is more than just my name. You know what I'm saying? Knowledge and, and spreading the word on everything you know or, you know, truth about shit is hip-hop that's exactly what hip-hop is so you know the knowledge is, is hip-hop is a movement so you either move with us or you're left behind you know what i'm saying for sure 